Hey guys, back for video two on the Venom 1 chassis. Today I got quite a bit of work done on this thing. While I was doing it, I paid specific attention to how I was doing it and tried to break it out in steps so that I could run through this video and show you guys. So what I'm gonna do is just try and get you a little bit more in-depth view of the chassis design itself and then we can go over from there and if you guys think of anything that you'd like to throw in uh, your include or ideas that you've got and things like that, just comment below and we'll, uh, we'll try and vet some of those uh, ideas out. But first we're going to get into the chassis design and the steps that I went through to do it. I showed you this drawing on the very first video. This was the control points that I grabbed from the original Wraith chassis and skid plate. Now I've got all of these labeled as to what they are as far as front hood bar, uh, front frame rails, bumper locations, all the different things that I was uh, wanted to pay close attention to as I went through the design. So, after that, I brought it in and I brought in a Wraith skid plate as well as uh, some mock-up drivetrain kind of. Now, these are not modeled axles or anything like that, they just kind of represent what the axles look like. I just did that just to throw something in there for an example. I've got full modeled axles uh, in my solid design software, but for this uh, I don't really mess with that much of a detail. So after that I just brought in those control points onto that same uh, setup and that allows me to start. Now the very first thing that I do is I start by drawing the chassis profile. Now I've drawn this profile using pictures from the Poison Spider build thread on Pirate 4x4. I grabbed those pictures and overlaid them and then I was able to uh, trace the outline and allow me to find out where those tubes went, the angles they fell, and things like that. And now that's just from a one perspective view though. So I have to take those points and then bring them out and create that 3D model of how the tubes are gonna fit. The side view model is the easiest part of the whole process. All this does is allows me to get one angle of the entire chassis done. When I bring it out, I then brought in those control points and I make sure that the points that I'm hitting with the profile of the chassis will work with the uh, design of a Wraith in general. Some things have to be adjusted just to get the uh, very basics of the chassis to work as far as uh, length, wheelbase, height, uh, suspension geometry, uh, servo clearance as far as when the axle comes up at a full bump or as it's articulating that servo needs to come up and be able to have room to move. That in this model I started to bring it out and give it dimension. Now here I made sure to make room for the original Wraith interior pan as close as I could anyway. Some little details on that is this black line that you see here is the original front of where that Wraith interior pan probably should go and you can see I had to move it back just a hair to to meet proportions and then the same in the rear. I needed to shorten that up just a hair to meet those proportions. Other little things is like this is the top of the dash bar. Now as you can see that is much higher than what I'm planning on. I'm going to end up having to do a custom dash with this and what I would like to do is incorporate the 3D printer as soon as that it comes I would like to be able to print my own dash as far as that goes. Also this is the front shock location. This a uh, black line between these two points represents the endpoints of where the shocks would mount. Now for my version I'm going to move those forward slightly. Now that will adjust my shock angle and I'll adjust the mounting height to be a little bit higher to compensate for that uh, shortening of distance between where the, where the axle mounts will be and the upper shock mount. A few other things. Uh, the front of the dash bar is usually the back of the hood. Since the hood will have to be further up I also needed to move the front of the hood further up as well. All that will have to be compensated for in the panel design as well as the placement of the hood and things like that. Again with the hood and grill I would like to see about incorporating some pieces from my new 3D printer as soon as it arrives which is hopefully going to be within the next, uh, hopefully it will be the end of this week but that's probably wishful thinking. Now the rear. The rear, this bar here is the typical location of the rear of the seat uh, area in the Wraith. I'm going to move that forward. I don't have a problem with that though because the distance between the dash and the seats in the Wraith stock is far too, far too large. And if you ever have tried to put a figure in there, you'll notice that that distance is very big. So I'll move the seats forward a little bit and I'll also move the dash back a little bit and that should give me better proportions. The rear. This is where the typical rear of a Wraith body goes. Now this Venom 1 chassis, the rear of the body panels were also back here. However, the physical 
chassis stopped much further forward. So I'm going to go along that same line and I'm going to try and compensate that with, uh, with actual just body panels. Now we'll have to figure out exactly how that's going to work. I'll probably make them out of aluminum and we'll probably be able to see some carnage when I'm running that a little bit hard, but I think that that could be cool at the same time. Now as we go a little further, this you can see here, I've removed those control points and I've started to add some of the uh, radiuses for which tubes I'm going to have uh, bent as far as the one piece. In the real Poison Spider Truck, there's not a lot of bent parts. And a lot of that influence comes from desert racing. In a lot of desert trucks, you'll see very few or zero bent tubes. The reason is, is that as they bend them, even in, with it, like a mandrel or something like that, the tube has to shrink and stretch on opposite sides. Now, that is less strong. So, they go with mitered cuts. They miter the tubes, and then they actually weld a little bulkhead inside of the end of those miters and then they weld those two pieces together just to get the maximum amount of strength. And Poison Spider did that exact same thing when they built theirs. After building more of the profiles, calculating more of how the tube will be bent and constructed, I moved on to checking some clearances. Now again, I used those same mock-up axles and then I articulated them a total of 45 degrees. Uh, 22 and a half degrees in the front and 22 and a half degrees in the rear. That's about all I'll probably run in a truck like this and my Wraith now probably doesn't have much more if more at all. So I just wanted to make sure that the things would clear. This is assuming 45 to 48 degrees of steering which is what the new Vanquish uh, steering knuckles have a built-in steering stop at. So what I wanted to check was to make sure that if I had a hood bar coming from the top of the A pillar to the front of the hood that I could clear and I have just enough room. These are also a larger tire than I'll be running. The tire that this is showing is 5.75 inches and I'll be running a tire closer to that 5.5 inches at least at this point but it's nice to know that I've got the additional clearance if I want to go to a larger tire. Moving on to the next part we've come in here and I've started to add more of the individual support pieces. These are the different diagonals and all those different little pieces that you'll see in a chassis that add the real strength and rigidity, the triangulation. Also, I've got a couple of pieces in the back here that you hadn't seen before. These will be where my rear shock mounts are. The front and rear shock mounts on this truck, I'm wanting to do some laser cut pieces of sheet metal and then fabricate those together to more closely replicate what was done in this truck as well as some of that desert style that I really like. Now this one here, you can see different colors and things like that. Those different colors are representing different tubes. And you can see here some of the tubes that will be one piece with multiple bends, uh, a lower structure with multiple bends. Then my upper uh, A to C pillar will be one piece. But other than that, that's about all that will be uh, one piece tubes with multiple bends. Now the reason you only see a little bit more than half of the truck here is because I'll take these tubes and then I need to extrude them along a path. So I take my profile of my tube, which will be 3 16 inch steel, and then I will extrude it along the paths that I've made. So like this one, it will extrude along that whole path. Shorter tubes will just be more of a straight line. After I've done that, I will mirror it to the other side. To show you what I mean by mirroring, these are the tubes that apply to both sides that I hadn't shown uh, in the other model. So, the other half of the tubes that are not missing are the same as these tubes here. So, I'll rotate to my top view, I'll use my mirror command, and there I have my full truck. Now I have both sides of the truck, and uh, I didn't have to do twice the work. I also show these rear tubes here hanging down, and what those will be is those will tie into the sheet metal rear upper shock mounts that I would plan to have laser cut. And I would like to have those mimic the Poison Spider mounts as much as I can. So there I've got the full chassis at this point. Now at this point I still haven't done any of the trimming of tubes to account for where the tubes intersect. I'll do that at the very last step. I don't want to go through any of that work until I've made 100% sure that everything in the design is exactly how I want it. So this still allows me to make uh, easy modifications to the chassis without having to go through and redo a lot of work at the end. So that is still the initial design phases of this chassis. There's still a lot of work to be done and those last details are what really can take up some time. From this point I need to finalize a few things in the design. 
First thing I have to do is finish my front and rear shock mounts. Then I need to trim all of the tubes so that I can create my templates to make it easy for fabrication. This truck has a few complex bends, meaning bends that are in multiple planes. So that takes a little bit of extra time in the template uh, process, but in the end, it makes things a lot easier. A couple of things that got brought up in the last video uh, that I wanted to address was, one, I would have loved to run dual shocks in this car, but to run a shock that really performs well, there's just, the amount of space that they would take up is much larger than what would look appropriate. Also the rear tire carrier. Poison Spider runs a rear tire flat in the bed of this truck. Now, one problem is that the size of the tires that we run on these trucks does not scale proportionately to the size of the tires that are ran on that rig. So to run a, a tire in the rear of this, I would have to run a smaller tire or uh, swell the cage a little bit. Running a smaller tire, I'm not okay with. I don't think that that looks appropriate. And swelling the cage, I'm also not okay with. So the rear tire is probably not going to go in. Many of the details on this truck, I'm going to be relying on the 3D printer. I'm really hoping that that comes through for me to make this truck a little bit extra special. I want to play around with some different processes that I've obviously never tried as I don't have the 3D printer yet. I want to make a custom dash. I also would like to mold my own uh, body panels. So I would like to use the 3D printer to print the bucks to then mold the pieces off of. So these are all things that I hope to experiment with here as we come in the next few months. So stay tuned to the videos and hopefully there's some processes that we can come up with in here that are interesting for all you guys to watch. Technology is moving extremely fast and this type of thing is becoming more available for people uh, like me that are just doing this thing for fun in their house. So this is something that may very well be something that you guys are doing on your own here down the road. That's going to be it for this video. Hopefully, you, if you guys have any comments or questions or suggestions that you'd like me to uh, think about or address in this uh, truck, let me know. I'm happy to take some uh, suggestions or things like that, and maybe we'll come up with something even cooler as we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends. I appreciate all the support, and we'll see you guys in the next one.